Well, good afternoon to Jesse Norman, MP for Hereford and South Herefordshire. Now, you are known for having a national and a global perspective on both business and economics. What I want to know is, to what extent is that relevant? How does that knowledge cascade and, and does it need to cascade down to the man and woman running a business in Herefordshire? I think you have to have an eye to the bigger picture because there are going to be implications very often in this increasingly interconnected world for your business. If the Eurozone is failing, the effect of that may well be that there's lower growth in this country over the next three or four years. That may affect your investment decisions. If uh, interest rates look like they're going to stay low for a long time because of quantitative easing, it's useful to know that because then you can plan you know, the extent to which you're borrowing money. So having an eye on the bigger picture is always a good idea for a small businessman at whatever level they're operating. Jesse, I've heard politicians ask business leaders in the past to get more involved in the political process. What's your take on this discussion? In Herefordshire, we've been very lucky because recently we've managed to pull into, uh, into an area around politics some very effective local business people, often who have national experience. One of the reasons why I think the Enterprise Zone has um, started to gain some real momentum now is because it's got high quality business people at the top of it. It's not an exclusively council activity. And I find that I'm constantly looking to bring more of that wider business perspective to bear to local problems because there's obviously an enormous amount of skill in budgeting, teamwork, strategy, etc., where business has a great deal to offer. What do you think are the leadership qualities that a business person ex exhibits, irrespective of the line of business they're in? Leadership is about setting clear goals and then concerting all of the resources you have around them. It's about building teamwork. It's about putting enormous amounts of energy towards the realization of those goals. And if you can do that, it really doesn't matter whether you're in a business organization or a social organization, because those are going to be the things that differentiate you from the people who come second. Now, I still come across directors, and they're not all old, but people who simply do not engage with the internet. Would you have a message for them right now, please? Well, of course, in some respects, it's a very admirable attitude because it often goes with a very, very determined craft approach to producing a beautiful product for local consumption. On the other hand, if you are making a wonderful cheese for local consumption or a wonderful cider, why not make it available for global consumption and give people the chance? I find I use the internet in everything I do. So I'm tweeting in order to draw attention to things we're doing. I'm Facebooking, or if I was more advanced, I'd be using LinkedIn to connect to different types of people and, and get the message across and to build networks. And of course, I have a blog on which I put down you know, important issues or ideas or things that we're running in order for the same reason. So I find the internet completely invaluable and I actually think inevitably it's going to become an absolutely staple part of every business going forward. Okay, we don't just have uh, businesses in Hereford, we've got schools and hospitals and community organizations, charities. To what extent do you feel that best business practice would also apply to these organizations, indeed any organization that's actually out there at the moment? I mean, of course, there are elements of business practice that do apply. It's quite important not to, as it were, force them into a business straitjacket. Um, it would be a poor hospital that regarded itself as a business rather than as being in the business of curing people. But take a doctor's surgery. A doctor's surgery is both a small business and also a vital part of a wider national health network. And if the effect of bad budgeting, for example, or bad goal setting or bad strategy is you don't have the access to funds, you don't have the local networks to build up uh, patient uh, databases, then you're not going to be able to do your job. Even if it isn't a business job, it's a healthcare job. You, Jesse, are known for being not just a politician, but also a serial entrepreneur. Now, I want you to imagine that tomorrow morning you wake up and you think, no, I've had enough of this politics business. I'm going to start a business. And on a white sheet of A4 paper, you start to write down your very first ideas. Tell me, which segment, which area of business would you go for? I think you actually never start with a blank sheet of paper. I think you start with what you know, and you start with the environment you're in and what it can support. And in Herefordshire, of course, we've historically been terribly strong in areas like food or security and outdoor activities, things like that. Um, so one might think that. In my case, I've always had a tremendous interest in education uh, and in technology, and so I might well be operating in the area of you know, something in between those. It might be delivering online education. It might be thinking about some new 
um, app on uh, you know a, a computer or something like that. It's going to be something that allows people to do something that they regard as valuable in their own lives. Now young people are very very important to the future of this county and our community and I do meet them sometimes that say I've been to college, I've been to university um, and still I can't get a job. Now uh, we know it's something to do with the skill, the how to do it, it's to do with the knowledge, knowing what to do and it's to do with attitude above all else. Which of these things do you think young people need to concentrate on in order to give themselves the best opportunity of getting a job in today's world? It's a, it's a good question. My, my advice in this situation is always the same. It's the kind of, it's the Second World War advice, you know, work hard and be nice. And um, the working hard is really important. It's a tougher world out there and everyone is born with a set of extraordinary capabilities and they need to realise those. And if they do that, it's actually, in some respects, hard to fail. But the be nice is almost even more important. Um, emotional intelligence, understanding other people, listening to them, listening to what your potential customers or clients are saying, listening to, to the person who might offer you a job and to what they're saying and they're going to be interested in. And the other thing I think that young people sometimes forget, and it's a particular shame when they do, because often there's so much talent sitting underneath it, is that very small things like of personal appearance or how you present yourself often make a real difference on the other side. And just kind of being well presented, looking the fella in the eye, putting your hand out, you know, greeting them in a kind of relaxed and confident way, that is absolutely uh, important. And, and of course, first impressions do really carry. And so it's a combination of deep, big things about attitude and energy and focus and listening. And it's a little bit of, of how you present yourself as well. Jesse Norman. Thank you very much indeed for your time this afternoon. Thank you.